Hallo miteinander. I'm Geshady Six. I am Raven. And I'm John Servbot. Before we can actually start this week, we have to watch this movie together. It sounded like a monster movie. What is it called? Yawn of the Dead? It really doesn't matter what it is, because unless we watch it, I'm not going to return back to Earth. And I'll be stuck on this space station, freezing Inferno and Heavy Metal Mage put me on. Whoa, are those zombies? Actually, I think those are the people that invested money into Waterworld. I think you mean those are the people that tried to watch Waterworld. Haha, <laughs> look at the guy on the left. Is his hair radioactive? No, I think he just fell into a bucket of paint. Does she have eye cancer? I think that's supposed to be kawaii in Japan. It's actually kawaii and kawaii means ugly. Your mom's kawaii? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Oh, who are those guys? It is the very unsuccessful purple man group. Caramba, would you look at that furious action? It's going so fast I can barely make out those speed lines. Aw, oh, poor boy, they're locking him out of the house. Maybe this is actually a plot to get him to leave. He's actually 35 and single. Just very short. And with everyone, they mean these three people. It is not a very pleasant village to live in. Your children will get green hair. But as long as Ricky is still alive, there is still hope. Shut up. Well, he is our protagonist. Your mom's a protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even begin to make any sense. No matter, the name of the game we're playing is Moon Crystal. Wait, we're playing a video game? I'm video out of here. Video games are for nerds. So long, sucker. Yes, please go. Just go. Phew. Good riddance. Those stupid robots. Anyways, Moon Crystal is an action platformer uh, that has never left the shores of Japan behind. Um, but what you're seeing here is pretty much a ROM hack, um, a translation provided to us by Alex W. Jackson. And that is a very neat thing, uh, because the cutscenes in this game are actually pretty interesting in my opinion. And the rest of the game is very good as well. It is really one of those cases where it's a shame that we never got this game. Yeah, really. Um, there are some minor complaints that I have with the game, um, but we can get into the details later. For now, let's start level 1. The Evil Forest. Right next to the happy forest of lollipops and rainbows. Um, the first thing you will probably notice about this game is that Ricky Slater has some very smooth movements animations. Um, the way he pulls himself up ledges, the way he jumps and crouches look pretty realistic. Pretty realistic for its time. In the forum's intro post this game was actually um, compared to Prince of Persia because of that. However, I have to admit that um, the graphics are pretty much the only thing that make this um, comparable to Prince of Persia because this game does not control like a cinematic platformer at all. It's still quicker, it's not like on a grid. Everything feels a lot lighter, even though some things don't happen quite as quick as in most platformers. Still, it's almost as swift as, for example, Ninja Gaiden. And there I said it. Ninja Gaiden. It is the one game that will immediately come to mind when you look at this. We have cutscenes, we have um, a melee based combat system with enemies that die in one hit mostly. And yeah, um, a lot of people would like to call Rip Off because of that, um, but I really hate it when people do that. Um, you've gotta know, um, with a certain piece of hardware like the Famicom, there's only so much innovation that you can do. Um, it really matters more to me whether or not what the game does is done well. Um, not really um, whether others have done it before. And Moon Crystal really does a lot of things well. So that's really what matters. But um, enough of that. We have reached our first boss, um, your unfriendly neighborhood woodcutter. Um, 
the mo special thing about him is that you cannot actually hit him from the front. You have to either hit him in the face um, before he attacks, or you have to hit him in the back. Now, before I did this take, I didn't even know you could attack this guy from behind. Um, so I pretty much took the more complex way to fight him. Um, there's also our easy achievement to get here, and that is um, killing a boss without getting hit yourself. And we are going to do that because this guy is a joke pretty much. I mean, look at how slow he attacks. Um, would you really think I would get hit by that? Of course you wouldn't. We get the final hit in and he explodes. Like all the woodcutters that you poke with a knife. I haven't actually tested that out and I don't think I should. Um, now, we just saw a little bit of story that unfortunately we had to skip. You know how it is with these contests. 15 minutes once you get control. Maybe they don't add to our playtime, but I don't want to make it more complicated for the judges. But what happened there was that we encountered a girl called Rosina, um, who happens to be the daughter of Count Crimson, who abducted our family and friends. And that she's helping us is very mysterious, very mysterious indeed. Okay, we are now in level 2 for a little bit already. Um, there are a few new things, but it's not a hard level. Um, we have these turrets that shoot, and we also have guys with machine guns. And I find that really peculiar. Ricky Slater here, little teenage boy, um, just slaughters all these armed adults, and I really don't see why he would be able to do that. Um, from As far as I know, this game is not based on anything. There is no real explanation why Ricky is as mighty as he is. But he just does the things that he does. He's just awesome like that. If they ever made a movie out of this game, fat chance, um, they should really get Jason Statham for the role of Ricky. All you need to do is put a green wig on his bald head and it'll be the perfect casting, totally. Because Ricky is my favorite action hero. Let's talk a little bit about the items that you can get in the game. Um, they're also always hidden in these chests. We have small hearts that re uh, regenerate one hit point, big hearts that give full health, and the most important health item is the heart container, which increases your basic life of three um, by one up to five. However, if you die or end the level, you will um, lose all your upgrades again. That also includes the ones we haven't talked about yet. But um, we can do that later. For now, let's fight this boss, who has a very easy pattern, but why should we even care if we can just bum rush him? Because he's that easy. He has so little health. Okay, now that that's done, we have finally reached Count Crimson's castle. The Count Castle. Um, they didn't have enough S's that day. Sorry, Mr. Jackson. Um, but I'm kind of glad that at least there's still the O in there. That would have been bad. Nonetheless, this third level is actually a lot trickier um, than the ones before it. Um, it actually has one of the trickiest spots in the whole run for me. Um, what the level does is it does some timed switch puzzles. Um, pretty much not puzzles, but switch runs. And one is coming up right here, and it's very, very unforgiving actually. Something that I want to mention now instead of later when it actually becomes relevant are seesaw like platforms that the level introduces. Um, these can be very infuriating for new players, and they certainly were for me. Um, what they do is if you don't hit them exactly in the middle, um, they will tilt to the sides and you may slide off of them. What you can do is you can go to the other sides to um, balance them out, but it's still very risky. You really don't want to mess around with them all that much. Okay, let's talk a bit more about the item items because health is not all in this game. We have um, knives to pick up. Um, that extends your attack. It's not one of those power-ups that stacks. It's either you got your puny standard knife or you've got the good long one. Next item is the invincibility diamond that we have also already encountered. Um, the best thing to do with the diamond is just run for it. Um, in this chest we will have another one. Um, 
There's really no point in fighting enemies in this game. There's no score, no real, no real advantage to killing enemies. So, just try to go as far with the diamond as you can. Oh, and what I have not um, mentioned yet, and what I should have, uh, what we just picked up were the double jump boots. We had them before, but the double jump in this game sounds very useful, um, but it's kind of tricky. Um, the thing is. Um, if you're used to double jumping like in the space jump of Metroid, um, you can do that double jump at pretty much any point in the jump. Um, in Moon Crystal you cannot do that. Uh, once you reach your peak, your double jump will be disabled. And that has often led me to plummet to my death, believe me. Before I really understood that, um, that really, the double jump really seemed so unreliable. It was just incredibly annoying. But I got over that and now we are fighting the Count. Wow. The villain of the game is here and he has a very hard pattern, but we do not care once again because we can just tank him. Really, don't even bother learning it. Just get through the level with full health and be cheap. Um, actually, this was not the true Count, it was an imposter and we found out that um, our family is on the McClana Island and they're being held captive at the slave mines there. So we're gonna get them back. But we have to get um, to the island first, so instead of just getting a ferry, Ricky Slater here is all vigilante and just hijacks a pirate ship, slaughtering the whole crew in the process. Ricky has just gained plus 20 renegade points. When it comes to new enemies in this level, um, it's actually not all that impressive. You have these standard pirates that lift up their scimitars way too high. Um, you have these shirtless dudes that um, punch the masts and try to shake you off that way. However, it doesn't work when you're on a ledge. Isn't that strange? I mean, that is pretty much the most unstable position you can imagine a human being in. Um, but. It somehow works. I mean, I really shouldn't be complaining all that much because it's one of those things that it's that is helpful for the player. But yeah, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But the worst thing in this level is that, yes, seagulls. Um, you have all these bloodthirsty swashbucklers just wanting to rip your guts out so they can take the few valuables that you have. And what is the biggest threat to you? Seagulls tiny little seagulls. I cannot believe it either, but you know how it is with birds in video games, in action platformers even. They are always the worst. Unlike these shirtless dudes, as I said, they are very laughable. Um, they even die in this very wimpy pose if you uh, look at it. Um, you know what I think? I think these are just little boys in big rubber suits. Yeah, you know how in that one episode of Cow and Chicken with those two bullies? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Great show, that one. Really enjoyed it. But enough about that. Um, by the way, if you're still not convinced that Ricky Slater is awesome, he just knifed an artillery bullet out of the air. Yes. People keep talking about this Chuck Norris character. Who is that? He doesn't compare to Ricky Slater. But, to be honest, neither did this boss here. I actually don't know of any other way to deal with this boss. Um, you could try strategy, but none of the ones that I used actually ever worked. It really is the best thing to tank him like that. And I honestly, I have to say that um, this is a pretty poor choice of game design, design in my opinion. Um, I mean, it's kind of embarrassing for the developer, don't you agree? I mean, it's once again not a huge issue because it actually makes things more comfortable for the player, but it really is just kind of silly. Game Design 101. Don't make it so that the player can just pummel your bosses. Well, apart from that, I want to talk about uh, the nature of this week's competition once again. Um, we were actually able to choose one of three games to record this time, and I picked Moon Crystal. The, um, one of the other games was Mitsumega Toru, a licensed game to the manga anime The Three-Eyed One by Osamu Tezuka. 
Um, it is also a Japan-only release, and it's also a pretty fine game, but I kind of just like the pacing of Moon Crystal more than the one in that one. And the third game of the list was Gimmick. That game is really, really hard. Um, not my kind of game, honestly. Um, not only was the game itself hard, but the achievements were also very difficult. Um, the ones in Moon Crystal are really not that tough in comparison. Um, the hard one, by the way, was defeating the Count in level 3. And well, since I am in level 5 now, I obviously did that one. Um, the secret achievement, by the way, was that little bit of tomfoolery in the beginning. Yeah, enough said. Um, that's a really tricky chest to get. Um, well, not really tricky, but unless you get to the spot right below of it, um, you're not gonna know that it's, that it's there. So it'll make you backtrack the first time um, you see this. Nonetheless, um, I was talking about the other games, and in the end, I really enjoyed Moon Crystal the most. Um, so it was the, pretty much the natural choice for me. Also, you know what's to the left of here? A secret passage, a fake wall with an extra life in it. Extra lives, by the way, um, they do respawn in this game if you die, and there's a checkpoint right before that, so that's really useful against the boss. And that boss... He is a giant, a beast of a man. He lifts these huge rocks just easily over his head, I really don't see how little Princess Stabity here would have any chance against this colossus, but turns out that little boys give him epilepsy. And that is the story of David vs. Goliath, Moon Crystal Edition. Yeah, the stage 5 boss, pretty much the biggest embarrassment so far, and that's saying a lot. Now, Stage 6 is actually the final level in the game, believe it or not. This is a very short game, just like most NES titles. Um, and I have to admit, this is actually now one minute of a blind run. Yes, I never bothered practicing Stage 6 before, uh, because I didn't think it was possible to get here in 15 minutes. But I did, and now here I am. Um, so at this point I had this really strange disposition in my head. I was like, please, timer, just go off and save me. I don't want to make an idiot out of myself now. But um, unfortunately for me, I had a death. Um, but in the end, I wasn't all that bothered about it because, well, it was just one and I have never even got this far in 15 minutes before. And all in all, it was still the best run that I could pull off. We're pretty much at 15 minutes playtime, um, not counting the intro in the beginning. So. I'm Gish86, this was the Let's Play Summer Blockbuster, week 6, with Moon Crystal. Bis bald!